Hello, welcome to Prigium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 70 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll discuss about error events in ASP.NET. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch part 67, 68 and 69 of this video series. Handling exceptions using try-catch blocks is commonly termed as structured exception handling and we have seen how to do structured exception handling in the previous session of this video series. Now in addition to the structured exception handling, ASP.NET also provides two error events, one at the page level and the other one at the application level. Let's actually look at an example. Here I have a simple ASP.NET web application project on web form 1. I've got a grid view control and a label control. And then within this project, I have got this countries.xml file, which has got a list of countries. And I want to display these countries within that grid view control. And we have seen how to do exactly the same thing in the previous session of this video series. The easiest way to display an XML data in a grid view control is to, uh, you know, by using a data set object. So here we are creating an instance of data set object. And then we are invoking the read XML method of the data set object to read the XML data. And, and load that into the data set. Once we have the data in the data set, we can then use the data set as the data source for the grid view control and finally invoke the data bind method. As you might expect if we run this application as it stands right now, it's going to retrieve the data from the XML file and display within the grid view control. Okay, so all is fine. But just imagine what's going to happen if somebody is going to delete that XML file. So this XML file is present somewhere within the file system. So if I navigate there and if I delete that XML file from that folder and if I try to navigate to this page once again, as you might expect, we get an exception and system.io.file not found exception. And why are we getting this exception? Because the file is not found and you are not handling that exception. So it gets propagated all the way to the application level and it gets shown to the user using this hello screen of death. Okay, and how do we solve this? The easiest way to solve this is by uh, having the try-catch blocks. And we have seen how to do that in the previous session of this video series. Now, if we forget to handle the exception or if, the, you know, in reality, there could be hundreds and hundreds of lines of code uh, within a page in, in a real-time application. And let's assume we have missed handling exceptions at at one you know at at a specific section within the page. So if there is an exception in that section of the page, it's going to you know propagate till the page level. Okay, and at the page level, we have another chance to handle that exception using page underscore error event handler. Now page underscore error event is only raised whenever there is an unhandled exception on that page. Okay, so to handle that event, we have the page underscore error event handler. So instead of page load, let's change it to page underscore error. And then the interesting thing here is how do we get the exception that, that has occurred? The easiest way to get the exception is by using the server object and it has got a method called get last error. And if you look at the intelligence of the method, look at what it's returning back, it's returning an exception object back. So let's create an instance of exception class, so exception ex. So we have the exception now, the exception object. Now once you have the exception object, we can log it to a database table or to an XML file or to the event viewer on that system. We will see how to do, you know, um, exception logging in a later video session. Okay, so we have the exception now. Now once we have the exception, now I want to redirect the user to you know a generic error page. Now I have also created this error page here, uh, errors.aspx. And if you look at this page, it's a it's a very simple page. It has got this plain HTML. All it says is an application error. That's an H2. And then I have H3 element and H3 element here just to display a message to the user stating an unknown error has occurred. We are aware of it. And the IT team is currently working on this issue. Sorry for the inconvenience cost. You know, any kind of custom message that you want to show to the user, letting him know that there is an application error. Okay, so I want to redirect the user to this page. So all I do is I redirect the user using response.redirect. And then I specify the page here it's errors.aspx, so I'm going to redirect the user to that page. Okay, but before we redirect the user to that page, I have to do one more thing. That is, clear the exception. 
Now, what happens if I don't clear this exception? We'll talk about that just in a bit, okay? So basically, if you want to handle error within page underscore error event, there are three things that you do. You, you get the exception, and how do you get the exception? By using the get last error method of the server object. The return type of that method is exception. So we are using a variable of type exception. And then, in reality, we will actually log it somewhere so that we have a record of that exception so that a development team can work on that exception and fix it. But here we are not doing it. We are going to look at that in a later part of, of uh, in the video series. And then the next thing is we clear the error. What happens if we don't clear the error? We'll look at that in just a bit. And then finally, redirect the user to that custom error page that we have here. Okay, so obviously now if I go ahead and run this, uh, as you might expect, you know, the page gets, it gets tried to loaded and then look at that it, it is getting now redirected to errors.aspx because why there is an unhandled exception on the page so this page underscore error event handler gets executed we are retrieving the exception clearing the error and redirecting the user to the errors page okay now in an application there could be you know hundreds and hundreds of pages as well now if I have forgot to have an error event like this on a page, what happens? Okay, let's assume if I comment this out now, what's going to happen? You know, the exception will be propagated to the page level. At the page level, I don't have the uh, error handler, so it's going to propagate till the application level. And there is another event at the application level called application underscore error that gets raised. Okay, and to handle that error at an application level within global.asx file, I have this application underscore error event handler. So this gets invoked. And then what we can do basically, we can handle the exception there, just like how we have handled it in page underscore error. Okay, so global application underscore error event handler event gets raised at an application level. So basically, the first line of defense is within the event procedure itself so page load event we try to handle the exception there using try catch block okay if we failed it to do there then we we have a second line of defense that is at the page level using page underscore error and even if we fail it failed to do it there then finally it gets propagated till the application level and at the application level we have application underscore error event handler if you fail it to handle the error here as well then you will get you know an yellow screen of death like this which displays uh, you know the exception information on that page okay all right now on webform1.aspx so here we are handling the error and we are clearing the error as well. And why are we clearing the error? Let's understand that in a bit. So there are two error events, page underscore error. This event is raised at the page level when there is an unhandled exception on the page. The event handler resides on the page itself. Whereas application underscore error, this event is raised at the application level. Just in case if the error event is not handled at the page level, it gets propagated to the application level and an at the application level application underscore error event is raised. When there is an unhandled exception at an application level, the event handler raise, resides in global.asx file. We have seen that as well. And these error events can be used as a substitute or supplemental to structured exception handling. Now look at this, if you are not doing the structured exception handling anywhere within your application at all, if you have within global.asax file, you know, error handling routine here, then it's going to handle all the exceptions for us. So it's going to act as a centralized, you know, exceptional handling technique. In fact, in real time applications, that's what we do. You know, we don't really handle exceptions in everywhere on the page. Okay, actually it also depends on from situation to situation, from project to project. Okay, but definitely application underscore error event handler can act as a centralized, you know, routine to handle exceptions within an ASP.NET web application. And please note, if the exception is not cleared in the page underscore error event, so if I don't clear the exception, look at that. Let's go here. Let's say I'm not clearing the exception and we are not redirecting the user. Let's put a break breakpoint there and let's also put a breakpoint within the application underscore error event handler. So we have page underscore error event handler. So we know that this event gets raised when there is an unhandled exception on this page. 
okay so it hits that breakpoint and then since we are not clearing the error within the page underscore error um, event handler it's going to propagate till the application level and because of which application underscore error event handler is also going to be invoked so it first hits the page underscore error so there is an exception here could not find that file now I, I press F5 look at that it comes to the page underscore error I press F10 and if you look at that you get that exception information there uh, could not find file and if I you know point my mouse over that plus sign you can actually see the exception there and look at this I press F5 now look at what's gonna happen it goes to global.asax and this is your second chance to handle that exception if you don't handle it there as you might expect what's what's going to happen it's gonna show that yellow screen of death and that's what if the exception is not cleared in the page underscore error event it gets propagated to the application level and application underscore even handler uh, gets executed if you are not clearing the exception at the application level as well then the application crashes with that yellow screen of death okay if the exception is cleared and redirection to errors dot ASPX is not done then a blank page is displayed let's look at that as well now let's go to webform one dot ASPX look at that I am clearing the error. Okay, let's stop debugging. So I am clearing that error, but I am not redirecting the user to the errors.aspx page. So what's going to happen, you know, when this piece of code gets executed, we have an exception. So it comes to page underscore error. You're retrieving the exception. You're clearing the exception, but you're not doing anything there. So it tries to process this line, it tries to get to this read XML line, there is an exception. So when there is an exception, immediately the page processing is stopped and the control goes to page underscore error because there is an unhandled exception. So you're coming here, you're getting the error, you're clearing the error and not doing anything. So that's why the entire page processing is stopped and, and it displays basically a blank page like this. So if the exception is cleared and redirection to errors.aspx is not done, then a blank page is displayed. This is because web form processing is immediately stopped when an exception occurs and you're not doing anything. So it shows the blank page. If an exception is not handled at the page level using page underscore error event, it gets to the application level and can be handled using the application underscore error event handler in global.asax and can be used as a single centralized location for error handling. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.